everyone and, and welcome to this uh, afternoon session of uh, our periodic web, uh, web webinar. My name is Stephen Asati, I'm a mining engineer practicing and currently as the surface mining manager at Chirano Group Mine and acting as the general manager. This afternoon, we want to just uh, share a few thoughts on green mining and thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So uh, just to uh, get going, the, the structure of the discussion will, will follow uh, this outline, what is green mining uh, practice, drivers of green mining, uh, green mining benefits, future of green mining, and some references for those of us who are interested to uh, make ourselves with more knowledge in this area. I must say the objective of this presentation is to equip and sustain interest in green mining uh, across the industry. This is a token contribution of an industry player to, to keep this uh, all important sustainable venture across the industry. Investors, academia, students, researchers, and practitioners ourselves, we want to keep this uh, on the radar so that uh, we can contribute to making it happen. In our quest to a net zero emission by 2050, I believe that if industry players can be participating and maybe uh, showing and demonstrating this, it will go a long way to achieve. We don't have to, uh, as industry players, see this as somebody sitting somewhere and making a commitment, uh, but we all getting involved, hands on deck, and, and striving to, to, to get to the expected end. So green mining basically implementing plantation of technologies and other processes which is aimed at reducing a possible adverse environmental impacts which are associated with the work we do, extraction and processing of metals and minerals. There are a couple of environmental impacts uh, Work in house gas emission by processes and mining equipment. The mining industry, uh, from the last count, uh, contributes about four to seven percent of greenhouse emissions globally. This we are determined to reduce by 30 percent uh, by 2030. And as indicated earlier, on our long term strategy is to get to a net zero emission by 2050. There is a release of chemical waste which is generated uh, in processing in the environment, for example, cyanide and other harmful chemicals that we use, excessive water usage and pollution, environmental footprints left by mining activities, our pits, our tailings facilities, all these uh, contribute to uh, the harmful effect of activities on the environment. Some green mining practices, uh, decarbonization, eco-friendly processes, techniques such as uh, bio mining, mine water conservation, mine waste management, mine rehabilitation and reclamation. Uh, when, when these things are on the radar, we will we'll follow our passion, we'll follow our interest. Uh, in the that suppression, for instance, we use excessive water in suppressing dust on our assets and ball roads. There are a lot of uh, market opportunities where we can source biodegradable, uh, eco friendly material to do the dust suppression. It will save us uh, water and it will also, uh, one way or the other, help reduce the impacts of our activities with respect to the use of all ways and other things. But if we this interest is not sustained, and if this interest is not put in the in the industry, what happens is that we will not even take a look at it. Anytime we see such a proposal, we are already thinking, of course. But you go into it and you realize that it's cost efficient and it's environmentally friendly.
what is decarbonization? The talking of practice of reducing the carbon emission is associated with the use of fossil fuels to power operations. It involves transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy, such as wind, solar energy to power operations and our equipment. Other alternative energy sources include electricity and hydrogen. Mining firms have declared, as mentioned earlier on, that they cut back on carbon emission by 30 percent by 2030. Now, this, I mean, in Ghana, I know that the Water River Authority are collaborating with a lot of uh, power users uh, to, to collaborate with them to increase their power generation with solar and other alternatives. So, I mean, hydro and solar, which are more cleaner than, than the fossil fuels. And they are calling on the industry, the mining industry to collaborate with them. I know uh, New Mont have had a form of a level of agreement where some amount of power is supplied uh, by VRA Google to New Mont through this uh, arrangement. My former employer, Mikod Ashanti in Ghana, is still talking to VRA uh, on this same uh, tangent, which is encouraging. Uh, it shows our industry's interest of, of working with other uh, interest groups to meet this, our need of cutting back on addition to, to the environment. We at Terrano, for instance, uh, most of our underground activities are powered by electricity. Of course, if we go this tangent of uh, getting cleaner energy from our suppliers, then it to go a long way to, to meet this need. So this is a sort of uh, interest, sort of uh, focus we want to keep in the industry that it is possible, it's feasible, it is cost efficient, and we just have to have this open mindedness towards uh, green mining so that we can work with other players in the industry to meet our uh, objective. The carbonization initiatives taken by the mining industry, replacing diesel powered fleets with alternative clean energy sources, launching of the world's first zero emission hydrogen powered manhole track, a prototype in South Africa mine, uh, MESIS 2022 by Anglo America. Uh, we, we also know that uh, DHP, uh, global giant uh, in the mining industry, is also looking for partners to sponsor through research uh, and fund uh, green <coughs> mining uh, projects. Launch of electric uh, dump track prototypes by equipment manufacturers such as Caterpillar and e mining and Many companies have begun incorporating renewable power sources such as wind and solar farm into their operations. We know of the Bofors Group at Agri Gold Mine, and Fagasta, Sadiver Mine, powered by 100% renewable energy. So it's doable. It's doable. And we need to keep the conversation going. We need to uh, continually deny the interest in all industry players. We, we need to, I mean, encourage students to do more research and, 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 and show um, no more interest in this area. We believe that in doing so, uh, we can contribute significantly to this objective we have set for ourselves. So these are some of the pictures which are showing what, uh, what is happening in the industry as far as green mining is concerned. So it's demonstrating clearly that it is possible and not only is it possible, it is efficient and it is doable and we cannot wait but keep the interest uh, going. <clears throat> we have some eco-friendly processing techniques such as bio mining, uh, the use of microorganisms, uh, bacteria or fungi to extract metals from pores. We know of Wasi and Fistia. Uh, <coughs> Uh, using this technology. 
adopts techniques such as uh, bio leaching and bio oxidation and environmentally friendly technique since it does not use hazardous chemical agent like cyanide to process or unlike conventional uh, extraction techniques. Also used as a waste management technique to clean up sites that have been polluted with metals. With respect to water conservation, we just need to, uh, I mean, step up, step up our game a bit on, on water usage. I mean, in our part of the world, there are so many water bodies. So when you are using water, sometimes you lose sight of the fact that it is something which uh, can easily get finished. But such discussions and interests should help us to be more uh, diligent in the use of water in our operations. And I mean, those of us uh, from Ghana who are on the call, we know the impact of illegal activities on our water bodies and the threat it poses to us. So if we don't do something uh, from we the responsible miners, if we don't do something to reduce and conserve water and compound to the already precarious uh, problems created by the illegal mining activities, then uh, as an industry, we are contributing and negatively to, to a sustainable society. And that is where we, we want to stay away from and rather demonstrate that we are responsible and our activities is really to support livelihood and sustenance of life. So wastewater treatment and use with recycling, those mines will create some of some sort of recycling system to minimize the flow of fresh water at the processing plants. The concept behind those who is to absolutely minimize water losses by using the same water again and again. You can think of dry tailing disposal and uh, also uh, operation uh, measurement. So we 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 doing this to just keep the interest so that we we'll become more interested in searching more into it, investing more into it, funding more of these uh, uh, projects so that at the end of the day we can still meet our ultimate objective and our best of reducing our impact on the environment. This is something we do and incorporate in our activities, but it's, it's worth uh, reminding ourselves that the restoration of the post mine landscape to the intended post mining land use, such as agriculture, forestry, or recreation, should not just be a legal or uh, a regulatory requirement. It should be something we as industry players have to put meaning to it. So in our planning, we need to make provisions for these things. In our uh, execution strategies, we need to have at the back of the, our minds that when we are mining, we will reclaim. When we are imparting the environment, there is a clear guidance, process, provision, funding made for uh, restoring the imparted land to, if not is uh, to uh, at least a good use that can still sustain life and support both uh, fauna and flora. We will not leave it just like that. It involves replanting vegetation and establishing ecosystem to support wildlife. The goal of my land with habitation is to return the land to a condition that is as close as possible to its original state or to a state that is suitable for the intended new use. So if you, if you cannot restore the forest, at least you should be able to get the land to support vegetation. And it should be part 
of the process as we are doing now. But we just want to make sure that we keep it, we are keeping it on the radar and we are driving interest, we are passionate about it, we talk about it. If no one on the mind is respecting for the job, that person does should lose sight of the fact that wherever we are disturbing, we need to, as a necessity to restore it back to use that can support life. What and who are the drivers of uh, green mind? The arising environmental concerns such as climate change, uh, there are strict regulatory requirements. Governments around the world are increasingly imposing stricter regulations on mining companies to reduce their environmental impact. So already uh, with this, if, if it's not something we are thinking about it as players, then we are pushing ourselves to the matter of business. Rising costs, implementing, implementing green mining practices can lead to cost savings in the long run, as it can reduce the use of energy and water, minimize waste, and reduce the need for costly remediation and rehabilitation uh, efforts. So thinking green is even cost effective. I mean, this is uh, in contrast to what we knew some decades back where i mean the conception was was that uh, green mining was expensive uh, we are moving away from that thinking to a new way new life where uh, depending on the, the choice the environment you find yourself green mining investment can be as competitive as any other means of providing uh, energy to power the industry. There is also a reputation to protect companies that adopt green mining practices may be perceived as more socially responsible and may have a competitive advantage in the market. Now, investors are watching. They are interested in the impacts of the activities of the investment they are making in the industry. We know that most uh, investors are not interested in mining just because of the impacts on the, on the environment. So once as industry, we continuously demonstrate that we can be more protective of the environment and we continuously measure and stand and know our impact and we have measures in place to mitigate, to reduce the impact to the various minimum. Then that one alone can go a long way to attract investment uh, in our industry. There are benefits of green mining and reduce environmental footprint associated with mining activities. Uh, it's debatable, that, but that is what it is. That is what we are seeing now reduction in operational costs, uh, improve energy efficiency in the mining sector, uh, then also water conservation. So these are some of the benefits uh, we get from, from green mining. How does the future look for green mining? Of course, industry, we are claiming that by 2050, we want to contribute zero emission to the environment. And over the years, if you compare the mining industry to other industries, our contribution to climate change is just four to seven percent. So with a little bit of determination, yes, we can do that. So the future of green mining overall is that it looks promising because more and more mining companies are recognizing the importance of the sustainability and are taking steps to reduce the environmental impact through green mining initiatives. It is likely that we will see continual progress in this area in the coming years. So friends and colleagues uh, who are listening, this is just uh, 
to let you know that the future of green mining is bright. If in time pass, it has threatened us uh, in the area of course, uh, we need to know that it is even cost efficient. And the more we show interest, the more we, we talk about it, the more we research into it, even the better it becomes. So I just want to share some of the few uh, articles on green mind for references. So that's so that those of us who interest are quick, those who interest have been ignited. Uh, these are some resources for us to sustain this interest and also help us do further research in the area. Thank you so much for your audience. Thanks. Well, thanks, uh, Kaved, uh, and thanks very much, uh, Sky, for such an insightful presentation that you have given us this afternoon. Uh, um, I'm just uh, looking at it uh, on the cost aspect of it, uh, because going green, obviously, is not going to be come with a zero cost. We'll have to get some capital costs and also some, um, some operating costs. Have we considered this cost into our normal mining uh, or, uh, cost? As it's the impact of the additional cost that comes with going green. I don't know if we have considered that one also. That's, that's my question. All right, thanks, Colin. So as I mentioned earlier on, I mean, in time pass, that which have maybe uh, drained out the passion and the interest in green mining has always been cost. But now we have a lot of uh, interest groups. I cited VRA Greco as an example. These companies are looking for partners. They will supply you power through the same grid, but it's just that they need your commitment to supply you the power. So depending on how you are able to negotiate, I, I even anticipate that you may even get a power cheaper than what is supplied by them. And I also mentioned that, uh, I mean, that's for pressing, for instance. I mean, uh, those of us who are in industry, we don't invest so much hugely into this area. Sometimes we contract some of these things out. And we have industry players out there who are willing to partner us to do the suppression for us. So we want to move away from where costs have been scaring us from uh, making a commitment to green mining but now knowing, wearing the cap that it can be efficient, so let me go into study. Let me go in to understand what is there. Yeah, in fact, that is the purpose of this uh, presentation and discussion. We want to take off that hat of saying that green mining is expensive. It is not so. I mean, a lot of things are coming out to attest to that. Yes, of course, every uh, uh, research, every uh, uh, investment, every uh, uh, funding requires some level of, of funding, so some level of uh, both expendi uh, capital expenditure and the running cost. Uh, but once again, objective of this is that we should not be scared away from it. Let's confront it through research, through studies, through engagement, through finding partnership, and we realize that it's even more cost efficient and cost effective than what we, we have always known. Gordon, I hope I've answered you. Yeah, uh, you have, uh, but sorry, I just need to do a follow-up because I mean, the I mean, the message in the in the public domain has been that the, the capital cost for doing this, uh, especially if you take, for example, the solar power, is what normally scares people. So if for some reason, uh, uh, VRA, and other companies have found it cheaper. I think this information needs to be out there again, just to get a comparative cost analysis so that people will now shift more to do this uh, solar and other green uh, power generation. That, that will help us a lot. Thank you. I think that is, I think this has a contribution to- Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is it Jerry, Jerry Chris, before we go to Bashir Amit? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, so, 
we all know that green mining is the way to go um, as we progress with our oppressions, uh, having the environment in mind. But as everyone is talking about the costs, the cost, the cost. Yes, the cost is really an issue. Um, I see case on case, depending on the life of the operations, um, that would then would then make you realize that whether you can really pay back the setup. So one of the key things that I think the industry we also have to look at is for each of the cases that you want to look at for the green mining, what's the payback period? Because if that is not well dealt with, um, it will look as if that yes, it costs effective at, at the end of the day for a longer period. But if you don't appreciate what you're going to put into it, and when you're going to realize the benefit, it would always scare people. So it's one of the areas that um, as industry, as we, we move towards that direction, there are a lot of couple of them. Um, but um, number one is that the payback period of those operations and how practical it is to suit the various operations that we we'll have. Because um, um, there are a couple of options, like to say we want to do trolley assist, for instance. Um, and if you look at our configurations in the pit, I see trolley assist to be more efficient in areas where you do a, a lot of haulages. Um, if you do a lot of input operations and then your haulage is not that small, you don't seem to benefit that much. So we need to to make it more clear out to people um, as we go into the research so that we all appreciate where it can apply, where it cannot apply, and when we're going to realize the benefit. It's just not a question for you, just an add-on. So that as we think through these things, we, we, we bring this on board as part of uh, our research and our discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Spot on. Uh, Basil. Basil, please, you are still on mute. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, mm. Stephen, thanks for uh, your, your presentation. I think my challenge how um, we've bedded sustainability and for that matter, green, no, green, green that we talk about all the time. Um, my experience um, over the last few years is that people have no idea what um, sustainability itself is. And they think of ESG and um, you know, come to green mine. People generally think that green mining and sustainability sits outside us. And um, they, they are not able to link it up to our traditional way of mining. Um, you find that um, in the past, we have done um, restoration, reclamation and restoration as if, you know, uh, something that we have to do is not really important to us and uh, we have used a kind of wishy-washy way to do that. I, I, I think that still that's the way people see it. So my feel is that um, for us to be able to get this and um, overall buy-in, we probably have to find a strategy and probably a framework that will help us to share this across the operation. I mean, not at a very high level, but everybody. If like somebody is going to produce today, he has to think of green. If, um, if nothing at all, how sustainable is the work that I'm doing today to the future of you know, our world and so on? I think that's where we sit. We can share all the good ideas, but if we don't have the buying of everybody, I believe that uh, it's going to be very difficult and takes a bit of time. I know somebody who did um, his master's in uh, uh, leadership in sustainability about 10 years ago. He only you know, secured a job about three years ago because people didn't see what the whole thing is about. It's only those of you, those of us who have, who have an idea of what it is and the benefits that will accept um, you know, green mining. You, 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 you realize that if you happen to have a boss 
who has no idea what uh, the green mining does. Oh, it's a nice idea, but you see the cost and others you cannot, but it never costs more. It's always better to do green mining and maybe more of considering sustainability in your, in, in whatever we are doing. So my, my, my input is that we should find a strategy, be able to share a strategy and a framework that will help us to share it across and up and down of our operations so that these things which are very important and necessary, as we've said, motivated by shareholders, motivated by you no know, regulations and others, should go down into everybody and we get it done more successfully. Thank you. Thank you, Basil. Uh, so uh, thanks. I think this is also a contribution, very important one. Yeah. So I mean, at the personal level, group level, uh, these are some of the, the small, small things we can do, the little things we can do to keep this passion on I mean, sharing our knowledge. So I encourage uh, participants that please let's use this important platform created for us by wire to be putting some of these things across. Let's keep the conversation going. I mean, in Deuteronomy, uh, in the Bible, we, we are told that we have to talk to our children about it. We have to discuss it in the morning, in the evening, everywhere. It must be on our mind. I mean, so we are already wearing a cap when it comes to the cost of remaining. Some of the discussion we can easily take up that cap away. And now people will show interest in it. So thanks so much for your contribution. And uh, let us all help. There's no, nothing is too little when it comes to this fight. And we shouldn't belittle ourselves and think that, uh, what can I do? I mean, this presentation already is bringing a lot of ideas on board. And I believe that uh, following this presentation, someone else is going to take it up and do more research, further work to even present uh, a better one. And then we are making uh, steps towards this achievement. So I, I will attempt to attend to some of the questions which have been posted. So we say year 2030 is only seven years away. And what measurable progress has any mining company in Ghana made? So uh, is that Christopher? Yeah. Chris, so uh, most companies in Ghana, I mentioned new months, uh, what they are doing uh, in collaboration with the uh, BRE, I mentioned Nangu Boda Shante, what they are doing in collaboration of BRE. I know both of even in Ghana are also uh, partnering other uh, uh, energy uh, providers in place of meeting this same thing. But if you can, I can simulate out one thing, then that one thing is that mining companies in Ghana are actually measuring our impacts. So we measure it. And it's one of the key things you, you need to do to understand what you are doing and what you can control. You can control. So we're measuring our the impact of our activities on the environment, and we are putting in practical steps. And this is a global initiative. So this uh, those of us who work for global mining company, the initiative is coming right from our corporate offices, and they are clear indices which they are measuring and they are monitoring to make sure that this. Uh, reduction by 30% by 2030 is achieved. I've just moved from Angulipo Dachant. So, I mean, I was part of a project who we were looking at this almost every week, every month, depending on the level of uh, corporate uh, interest in it. Every week, every month, every quarter, we we're meeting to see how we can push this agenda. And I've mentioned the power supply collaboration with VR. Uh, and I also know of a, a gen step EG is taking to reduce uh, the supply or, or to reduce uh, diesel and replace with gas, which of course will also cut, cut back on the mission. So they are practical steps. A lot of mining companies are doing. I've mentioned that my new place to uh, underground is hugely powered by electricity. Yeah. So if that electricity, they are able to turn it green, then of course. So Christopher, much is being done, and, and, and we need to get close to it and, and trumpet 
what we are doing even as a nation. Then uh, there is another comment which I want to read. If it's a person who tend to answer. I think also that more effort should be made towards getting a buy-in from the usual finance teams that often deals with cost containment issues with mines that are marginal. They are basically running hand-to-mouth operation. So we we'll shy away from long-term beneficial green mining. Because though these ideas of green mining are great, the perceived cost will only make money that have very positive cash flows for their trade. Yeah. I take this one also as a comment, but as indicated, until we continue to talk about it, until we continue to demonstrate as players, as people who are interested in green mining. Uh, we will still be wearing that old cap that green mining is suspension. But over time, we are getting to know that it can be more cost efficient. And industry players need to show interest and put this on agenda and rather change the benefits of green mining, not only in its uh, a traditional form of maybe reducing impacts on the environment, but as uh, as Jerry uh, mentioned earlier, on being a real business case, a real business case, and understanding, and that is what will bring out the quality of what we are discussing in terms of uh, the cost effectiveness of green mining. If we don't do the work, it will be very difficult. And you see, this the mindset we have had on green mining have been built over years, ages. So it is not easy for any of us to give up the understanding we have when it comes to green mining. In Ghana today, a lot of homes are running their, uh, their houses with solar power. They are work. They clearly understand what it costs to do it and the benefits. They have been able to do it in Ghana. These are not fabulously rich people, but these are people who have taken their time to do the work, do the mathematics, to know that, yes, I will need a bit of capital today to buy the panels, to buy the batteries, to do this. But if I do it today, over the next five years, if I compare me paying regularly every month to ECG, this is what I'm going to save, plus the fact that uh, you are you, you rescue yourself from do so and other power trips and other things you do it. But until you do it, you ask for the price of the solar panels on the market, and they will tell you it's 10,000 Ghana cities, and you look at you paying 15 uh, to maybe 150 Ghana cities per month for power supply through the grid and say that we need to scale you. But we need to do the work. We need to do the work. Thank you.